So, I've got a set, but how do I port it out on BrickLink? Well, stick around and I'll show you how. Hey guys, welcome to the video. Today's video is another BrickLink tutorial. So this is the second in a series of BritLink tutorial videos. The first one, if you remember, was all about how you part a set out into a wanted list to be able to then source parts for a retired set. If you didn't see that video, then check out the link above and that will take you to it. But this particular video is all about how to part a set out to sell the parts. I'm going to be using the same set that I had in my first BritLink tutorial. So I'm going to be using this McLaren Senna Speed Champion set. But what I'm going to do this time, instead of parting it out to put into a wanted list for a retired set, I'm going to part it out to put in your inventory, which eventually you will sell. So I'll take you through the process. I'll go into the part out screen and all the options that are in there, all the plethora of options in there. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay then guys, so here we have um, BritLink and I've already logged in. So and now I'm going to show you... I'm going to take you through the process of parting out a set into your store inventory and I'm going to use the McLaren Senna set which is set number 75892 and I'm actually going to take you right through to the end of actually putting this into the store. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the set number which is 75892 and if you remember the easiest way to do this is to go up to the search bar at the top and put the set number in 75892 and it gives you the list select to the top option which is usually the one you want to be going for and then that will take you into the screen that shows you everything where sellers are selling this particular set so I'm not interested in this screen obviously this tells you who's selling the set and how much for but what I'm interested in is actually finding out what the parts are and how I, and I want to get them into my store. So if you remember in the last video we had this part out option here to a wanted list so what we're actually going to do is do the part out option to my inventory. Now you can basically go to this option to say add to my inventory but what that actually does is just add the whole set to the inventory and we don't want to do that we want to break up into its constituent parts. So what we're going to do is going to click on this part out option here and this will take you into a screen with lots of options so just bear with me on this one guys so there's four steps into porting out into your inventory first step is to in essence get the list ready for editing so that the list being the list of parts that this set makes up so it pre-fills some things in for you already so it's filled in the set number for you the hyphen one is basically if there are different versions of the same set you can change that but it defaults to a one the number of sets that you are parting out so if you had more than one of these sets then you can basically if you say you had three sets you would change that to three but for the purpose of this video I'm going to set this to one you can decide whether or not you want to part out the parts uh, and the minifigs as whole or if you want to part out the parts and then break the minifigure down into its constituent parts so hair, head, torso, legs, etc. But for the purpose of this I'm going to select parts and whole minifigs. So the next few options on the top part of this we have break sets in set. Now that basically means that if there are any elements of the set itself if there are any kind of like subsets in there that are made up of smaller parts then basically you can break that out individual sets so a classic example actually is the speed champions most of these speed champions come with a little bag inside that have the wheel trims and they are classed as a wheel trim set now if you have that option ticked basically what that will do is it will break that into four you know four or eight individual wheel trims rather than putting it onto your inventory as a set so for the purpose of video I'm going to leave that ticked but as I say if you want to leave those sets intact you can leave those sets intact if you want to include original instructions you can do so again if you're parting out a set like this that comes with instructions most sets come with instructions you probably you can include those as well again I'm going to include it sometimes when I'm parting out sets I might keep the instructions to one side but in this case I'm actually going to include the instructions 
You can also include the original box. Now, I don't tend to do that. Once I've potted a set out, the box goes in the bin. But you can if you want. If somebody's going to buy an empty box, you can do that. We'll put it onto your store list. I tend to leave that option blank. And also, if you want to include any extra parts. So this basically, the bits that you get left over. If there are any bits that are left over, Bricklink knows what those bits are. I always thought they were, a bit, they were random, but apparently there is... These, these additional bits that you get left over are specifically selected. So again, you can include the additional bits if you want. I leave this option ticked. You can change the condition to new or used. Obviously, if you're parting out a set, the condition is going to be new. But let's say if you manage to get a used set off a car boot sale or a friend or something like that, and you know it's a used set, then obviously you can part out into, into used condition. You can default the prices to I'll enter my own prices or you can then choose options around last six months sales average, last six months sales average by quantity. I don't go on the sales average purely because I tend to list my parts towards the cheaper end of the scale. So I know that when people are searching for parts, I'm on that first list, sorry, that first screen. But if you really wanted to and you weren't too bothered about getting these things to turn around quickly and you're happy for them to go in the average, then you can basically get BritLink to work out an average price. And what it does is it looks at the sales over a last six month period and goes, right, well, the expensive, most expensive sold for this and the least expensive sold for that and the whole range in between and it works out an average price. For the purpose of this video, um, what I do is I enter my own prices in the next step. You can round to two decimal places or three decimal places. I leave it rounded to two decimal places. If you want to create a bulk amount, so when you're adding items to your store, you can create a bulk amount. So let's say, I don't know, in the set you were doing four, four of the same set, parting them out. You know that you're going to have at least... 10 wheel trims of the same type you could create a bulk item of just 10 wheel trims again i don't do that i leave it set to one you can then change the quantity as well you can default any comments on the parts and you can also default remarks comments and remarks tend to be used i think more so for used parts so for example there might be scratches if you put in use or wear and tear or you know chunks out or something like that i leave that blank you can choose to upload all items as stock room items. There's a little question mark here which basically tells you a little bit more about it. But in essence, stock room items are items of stock that I hold that aren't currently for sale. So your store inventory can, be, can consist of what I'm currently selling and what's currently in my stock. Now, everything that you're selling and what's in your stock is your stock. But you can segregate it by saying this much is my stock, but I'm not selling that yet. And then yeah, I think the idea behind it is that as your kind of like the stock you're selling dwindles down, you can bring in more from your stock. So if you, it's a way of limiting how much you're selling at any one time. Again, I'll leave that blank, that option blank. The next option is to retain all items in my inventory after they're sold out. Again, another little tip for you if you're selling parts is that if you sell out of a part, Normally, BrickLink will take it off the list and it will take it off your inventory. If you then get that part again, you will then have to re-add it. What you can do is you can say to BrickLink, well, if that part goes out of stock, keep it in my inventory so that the next time I get some more of those parts in stock, I don't need to go through the process of adding a part to my inventory. I can just go to that inventory item and change the stock quantity. Again, for the purpose of myself, I'll leave that option blank. And then the last option on this middle bit here is to exclude all items from upload by default. I don't know why you'd want to select that, but basically what that means is you can part out into a list and then exclude it from the upload. I, I honestly don't, do not see the benefit of that option, so again, I would leave that blank. The next section is all about um, setting base tiered pricing. Now, tiered pricing basically means that you can set different prices or you can set a discount based on quantity bought so you might say well take a single part you might say well I'm going to sell that for 10p but if somebody buys a hundred of them then tier one can say well I will reduce that to 8p or I'll add a you know relevant discount to reduce that to 8p if somebody buys 500 that could be a next tier up I'll reduce it to 6p and so on. you can only have three tiered prices at the moment in BrickLink 
this is all about as you port out a set into your inventory you can set your your tiered pricing again I don't work with tiered pricing I sell individual items and the price it is is the price you pay regardless of quantity amount so for me I'll leave all those fields blank the last section of options is all about consolidating the items that you're parting out of this set into your inventory now Obviously, if you've got items in your inventory and they are at a current price or they are set at tiered, tiered, set tiered prices, you, do, you, you can basically add the new parts into your inventory and take the prices that they are currently on. So, for example, let's say I've got 10 wheel trims. I keep using wheel trims as, as, the, as the example. But let's say I've got 10 wheel trims and they're currently on there at, say, 10p each. Now, if I'm adding 10 more, me personally, I want them to go on at 10 p each. But there are options here that say, well, I want to be able to add new pricing items. So it gives you the option to say, well, I've got 10 at 10 p and 10 at 8 p. Again, don't really see the benefit in that personally, but I personally just use the old price, the old tier pricing. Same for the bulk amount, if you're wanting to specify a new bulk amount or you're wanting to absorb it into existing bulk amounts. So if you've already got some parts on your list that you're selling in bulk quantities of 10 and you add another 10, then that's basically adding one bulk amount of 10 parts. Again, I leave it at all bulk amount. I don't deal with bulk amounts, so for me it doesn't really matter. Uh, and basically the rest of the options are all about whether you're consolidating into your existing inventory whether you want to use the existing remarks or if you want to use the existing extended description etc etc you can also tick this option here at the bottom if you certainly in regards to the remarks you can concatenate remarks so say for example if you've got parts in your inventory that have got remarks but you don't want to remove the existing you can just concatenate any new remarks you put in to remarks that already exist and then at the bottom is basically this this defaults the sort order when you get to the next screen so by color name up so when you when we get to the next screen which is the submit for edit it will list out the parts that are being parted out from this set in that order and there are various options that you can choose so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go to step two which is submit for edit and then that will give a give us a list of parts so in essence and what you're going to be looking at now is this set broken up into its constituent parts and the quantities that they are in the set so as you can see we've got a sticker sheet and we've got one of those we've got two of those we've got one of those we've got two of those so now he's here is where you can set the price and also things like tiered pricing the bulk amount any percentages off change the condition whether you want to add to your stock room whether you want to delete all the options here are now on an individual part by part basis. So the idea is I can go through here and I think, well, actually, I've decided I want to keep those three by three cross plates. So I'm going to delete from this list because I don't want to add them to my inventory. So I would click on delete. And then when I click the, bo the button at the bottom of the screen, instead of adding that to my inventory, it just removes it. So it doesn't get added. And scroll back up to the top because I'm going to include all those now because on the previous step I left the option for me to add new prices all the price fields are all blank as you can see now here is where I can basically put my own price in but what price do I put them in at well normally when I'm selling parts what I tend to do is I will look at who's selling it at the moment who sung it in my area and also take, on, take into consideration the condition of it, whether it's new or used. And then I will put my price in it with an aim or with a view to make sure that I appear on that first search list page. So when, when anybody's looking for a particular part, it will be on that first list and I'll be there in amongst that, that list of sellers on that first page. For the purpose of this, I don't know what price each price is so there's a nice convenient link above the price box which if you click on that it gives you a pop-up and it gives you a bit of pricing information so it tells you uh, the last six months sales how many were new how many were used how many were sold the lowest price they were sold at the average price that they were sold at and the highest price they were sold at 
and then average by quantity which is slightly different and again for used and also the current prices so how many are currently on sale for new for used quantity how many on sale the lowest price and the uh, average price and the highest I would be aiming to be put it in around the lowest or just above the lowest. So what what I tend to do is a bit of a rule of thumb really for myself is that I will go 2p higher than the current lowest price. Usually that will get you onto that first search list, that first page of the search list. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to say on that one that is 13p. So then you go through and you it's a bit of a tedious lengthy process this but basically you go through and check the price of each one put the price in and then once you're happy with it you scroll all the way to the bottom you put all your prices in you click verify items that will take you to the verify items screen in fact what i will do i'll just go through and i will mark to delete everything but the sticker set so just bear with me a sec I guess so what I decided to do in the end was um, in the previous step I decided to take the average price save me having to go through and add in the price I wouldn't normally do that but for the sake of this video I wanted to take you through the next step basically so what it will do is it, it's going to add all these pieces on at the average price I can always go back into my inventory afterwards and I can edit that so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scroll right down to the bottom and I'm going to hit the verify items button and then that will take you to step three of the process so once step three of the process is loaded so this is just basically listing out all the items giving you the current quantity and the price you're going to list it at it's just a final check as you go down the screen to make sure you're happy with everything you click upload it tells you at the bottom how many items you're listing how many unique lots you're listing and also the price in total of what you've listed so all is left to do now is hit the upload items button and then the next screen it basically tells you that you have successfully imported your items or processed your items and that is it guys that is parting out a set to your inventory now there are a lot of options there and it's a case a bit of a trial and error hopefully i've tried to describe you know most of or all of the options that are useful to you it's not rocket science but it's not a simple process i think once you've done it a few times and you get used to it it does a become a little bit easier hope you found this video useful don't forget guys to check out uh, the next one's coming out the next BrickLink. don't forget this is in a this is a, a, a series of videos that i'm doing for BrickLink tutorials don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and leave a comment below if you've got any questions about the process i've gone through if there's any of your options on that screen on that process i've just gone through you know please drop a question in the comments below we really really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button and obviously don't forget to hit the notification icon which is a bell on the app and a cog on the website anyway guys i'm out of here see you later for another video